check in on the progress my boy Devin he stayed well a while last yeah or this evening while I went and ran and did some homework I wasn't watching him too close and he was busy welding he probably didn't even notice it this baby here is humped up it ain't bad but it is it ain't bad no there it is oh boys that ain't good I'm gonna have to add just a little bit of shoulder to that. I don't trust that. But see the chains we've got the rod too low because they got the wearing in down here and they got the actual dragon on the conveyor deck. They're just a bunch of stuff rigged up on this deck. It was horrible. We got we got the Well first it was put in too low. So it ain't even when it gets up there. And we're gonna try to start running some loose material instead of package material so it needs to come up at the same height as this of course the wiring everything down here the coal of the old conduit and stuff the flex is all messed up the torque arm on this gearbox is all messed up we got that straightened out oh it's a tad bit wally cocked it'd be all right motor was wally cocked it was running the pulleys was running like this you know and Run on one belt, so we're hitting the second belt back on. Getting that hose through some protection. I'll have to put some little something around that to keep it cutting right there in the conduit. But if that something, piece gets in there and falls, it smashes the conduit. Yeah, what else? Let's go with this. Now our tensioners are kind of primitive looking, but I'll come up with this boneheaded idea. Basically, they have no Cause these, if you put these on here, the fork truck just ruins them. This one's lasting because there ain't no fork trucks out here. So this one here, it's screwed up and that chain's actually getting a little loose. So I'm gonna have to do something about it. But like, here's how I've been fixing them. And it's been taking a thick piece of steel and putting on it and welding me a block. So if you need to tighten them up, just hook, come along, pull them up, and we'll, we'll tack your shim in there. If you ever need to loosen back up, zap it all back off and take it loose. I know that sounds stupid, but is uh, see, there's one that's getting from the back. But I mean, it's aggravating the life as these things live. And you never touch these chains. I mean, you never touch them in a million years. You never touch them in They just last forever. You keep them old. But, uh, you know, to bust them loose. But if you do, hell. Get a gouger out and gouge them loose. Slide them back. Uh, what else? This dude, 
the pull up on the scissor lift here was back here. They have to hold her now. The board coming fall. Here's your hand stuck down in here. So we cut that box out of there, and I'm gonna mount that baby. Right, char. And then uh, it's a momentary thing. You hold the button in to keep it moving. You let off the button, it stops. And then here's your. Let me see. Well, come on, act stupid while I got the camera on. That's what that runs. And everything else is locked out, don't worry. The other stuff we got locked out. But, low budget technology. And the scissor lift actually is leaning over here. The bushings are out on the floor down there. So bang. That's actually the scissors leaned over. But, we ain't gonna sweat the small shit. But that's that. Well, look how much higher than the last two strands are running than these two. Lumber's been dragging on these. So hopefully when we get it all done, the deck mechanically is in good shape. And there's little legs. My boy Devin done welded them in there. He's welded the back part of them. Good kid. I like that boy. So that's what's going on stairs. And this used to be, we used to have banded bundles. We used to buy a four quarter. We had them grates in there. We could get up in there and stand up there and cut the bands. But that's went to the wayside. So basically we just taking up space. I'll cut the rest of the catwalks out and use them somewhere where we need them. And here we're running the yard out. We're about out of wood. <coughs> Other than pile stock. And there's the cherry. So on cherry is uh, started on today. Push the white oak out and start on cherry. So. Oh, I should show you all that stuff. But uh, there's your hell, there's still white oak on the line. The cherry just got started. There's a wide oak we're pushing out. To the end of that, I think that's actually some long poplar there. There wasn't much wide oak, just a couple of them. All right, now up here, we haven't got this figured out. We're just starting into it. We got a few ideas of things we're gonna do and we're starting to throw them on there loose. So here they are loose throw down there and they get carried down and thrown on that deck down there loose now but coming off of here we're having some issues in the tissue and everything I've come up with adds moving parts and let me tell you something moving parts ain't always the answer a little moving parts is what you need to do a job is the best way to do it long term and you want them durable. And this little guy, they picked this up a while back, and, it, and it's okay, but it ain't it ain't the answer. So I got to thinking, well, me and Guinea got to arguing, really. You know, and I was gonna put a drop belt in here that drops down and takes it over there and does something with it. And there's a lot that goes on here, too much to explain in a video here, but the latest thing we come up with is if we cut the chains right here, we should just pass these rollers and isolate this little deck off that side. And then this little deck can run, it runs forwards or backwards and it can send stuff over here. And then where we cut this deck, we'll angle it uphill and it'll be climbing. And as it gets out here, We'll build a right shaped bunk and just dump it over into the bunk. And we'll, we'll do some finagling. It'll take some finagling to make it quite right. But it'll somewhat, when we get done, maybe possibly resemble this pulpwood bunk. Maybe something to that nature. I don't know. But we've been talking a lot about it, been bullshitting with the guys. They're coming up with ideas, and I'm coming up with ideas. And big Mom and Big Daddy's coming up with that. Where's Kitty? Hi, Kitty. Oh, I hang underneath the deck. Yeah, I eat sticks. I hang underneath the deck and eat sticks. Yeah, there's pretty good sticks under here. Are you set up for a surprise attack? Is that what you're doing? Kitty. 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 
by the way this is designed explain this better so look, this here sits here locks here the loader clamp loader so here's my forks and here's my clamp he comes in and he goes and comes through that hole right there with his clamp and comes out with a whole wad and it works great on pulpwood this system has worked for a long 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 time a long time and here's where the forks always goes in, where this piece of metal is. And you can see where the forks are touched from time to time. And then you see where the height is on these. So it keeps you up off the ground more. And you got little clean out holes right here, so you can get in there and sweep it out or whatever, if you had to clean it out or whatever. And then all this room up here, from here over to here, for the clamp to come in and clean. And look, the clamp hits up here from time to time when you're getting a good bite. And this is only a quarter inch wall too. And he's lasted. So I mean, through, you know, the only thing that really gets it is these, these pieces are kind of, they're quarter inch wall and they're kind of giving up a little bit. But this system's pretty much proven itself for us over the years. But here's my issue. Is you'd have to, uh, well, I'll tell you what you could do. See, because the sprockets need to come out of way. See, this got kickers on the back. But this here wouldn't. To eliminate moving parts, you wouldn't have kickers. So if you come out and got your chain conveyor out this far where they can dump off and kind of, so they can make multiple layers of mess. But here's my problem. When you come in with the loader, how do you keep from destroying your sprockets if they stick out where they need to? What about this? What if the ones that... Hmm. Okay, what if the ones that's up here around the clamp stops back here? Nope, because that'll get yourself crossed up. You just have to have your chain conveyor made right for where your loader clamp comes in. That's all there is to it. That's just all there is to it. See, and you have a sprocket over here, a sprocket over here, and nothing in the center where the chain, the, and then I'll have to make them tail sprockets, adjusters, like I did them adjusters down below to where you can't destroy it. See, here's what happens when you put adjusters that ain't logger weight adjusters on a deck. They don't blend well with loaders. And then you can sit there and go, well, low drop rare should do that, should do it. No, it's just human nature. You just, to get exposed to this enough times, you're just gonna put a whipping on something. So it needs to be like that thick, inch thick stuff, inch by six bar. And then it just needs to not have all this mess back here. It just needs a, the longer weight shimmy sister situation where the loader fork hits it, it don't matter. It just slide right through it. But anyways, it needs to come up in there and it probably needs to come out as long as it don't come past that roof line with moving chains because that turns into a freezing problem in the winter. But if it comes up, and gets elevated enough like it's here and you can dump it and have the pulpwood buck sitting out here a little piece like that is and just maybe so crazy it just might work but anyways anybody got any ideas let me have them we're all ears here we're all trying to figure this problem out without adding moving parts let me tell you that whole place is full of moving parts the least of them you got the better off the person is and here's my here's my find here's my $500 Facebook find this old boy, he got sick of looking at this in his garage and said, hell, I'm gonna get rid of it. I woke up early this morning and all that mess of junk in there. I told mommy I loaded it up and I already feel like a muscle head. Just loading it up. Ugh. Get pumped, just loading it up. <laughs> but no, all that stuff gets put together and it's got the doodads that swing in on your arms and the, the, the bird arm stuff and the, 
daggone whole mess. Look at that 45 pound beauty. All these weights. Of course, Stevie'd lift weights like this. That's a Stevie lift. He'd max out at five pounds. Of course, that logger weight started about 445 pounds on there. Yeah. Stevie. No, Stevie, this is what you'd start with. About 2.5, Stevie. Look at that. Look at that, Stevie. I can pick that right up, Stevie. You ain't got nothing. Stevie ain't. There's a 2.5 over there, Stevie. That's about your speed, buddy. Huh. Well, all right, I'll shut this off. But we just went and loaded this pile of mess up. I'm gonna take this home and put this in the house. I fear between me and mommy and the boys will put it to good use over time. But it's $500 for all that mess, old boy asked. He said, man, I've had people call me off the hook today. I'm sure glad I got to him first thing this morning. Later, taters. <laughs>